Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program with myself, Martin Blackham, and with my wife, Natalie Blackham, from our studios in Jerusalem. And uh, we welcome you wherever you're watching across the world. Great to have you with us. And in, in the, the Holy Land, uh, as we are in these momentous days, very important days, and giving you the news from Israel and what's happening in the world. And starting off with a story, Natalie, which concerns Israel, but is, is very much uh, a world story. Uh, it's disturbing news, but it's very, very important news for you to know. Is that um, in a threat, and I believe it's a threat to humanity, world leaders uh, are to have or going to introduce the highly discriminatory COVID vaccine passports. The leaders at the G20 summit in Indonesia signed a declaration to introduce the unjust and unnecessary uh, jab passports for their respective jurisdictions. The uh, injectable passports will be part of a dystopian future where international travel, and this is where it's the, the rubber hits the road, if you want to travel anywhere or do anything, is severely restricted by the global verification system. This is something you need to think about. We acknowledge the importance of shared technical standards and verification methods to facilitate international travel and recognizing digital solutions and non-digital solutions, including proof of the jab, read one of the clauses of the G20 Bali Leaders Declaration. This is just hot off the press as we've come into the studio. We support continued international dialogue and collaboration on the establishment of trusted global digital health networks which should capitalize and build on the success of the existing standards and digital uh, COVID certificates. Indonesia's health minister Budi Gunandi Sadikin was quoted by local media that a digital health certificate using WHO, World Health Organization, standards would be introduced during the next World Health uh, assembly in Geneva in May next year. That's May of the year following this program. If you have been uh, jabbed or tested properly, you, you can move around. The fact is, if you haven't, you can't. Uh, the jab passports, of course, are part of a dystopian future, and it's nothing to do with whether you've had the jab or not, by the way. It's a threat to humanity because it's about digital identity. This is the, the where the rubber hits the road, the bottom line. And the piece of the puzzle in the uh, end time scenario is the digital identity. A digital identity in companies encompasses uh, everything that makes you unique in the digital realm. Now, this is very, very interesting when you say that, because I was speaking with a friend and she's reading a book about Moses. And it's a compilation of all the the writing and all the knowledge that the Jewish people have about Moses and she's she's saying she's discovering a lot of things and one of the things that she was telling me because we know we need to know we know that we are going into the final redemption so we are going in one way the whole world is going through um, the same process that the Jewish people did when they went out of Egypt okay so as the world now we are going through the same process and so she was saying that in, in the writing, in the Jewish writing, they said that Pharaoh has put um, uh, had, a mark. Yes, a mark on every uh, Jewish slave because they were slaves. And when she said that to me, I was like, this is exactly the parallel of what we were having. And what did you tell me yesterday when, when I was speaking about that? So about the mark? No, you spoke about the Holocaust. Okay. That they had the same. Do you remember? And like during the Holocaust, they had a mark on their on the on the uh, arm, and and like right now, I mean, sorry. So f during Moses' time, they had also a mark, and now we are going into the same thing. Now we and we need to know because when we give you all these stories, we want you to know what's happening in the world. But we need also to look through the Bible and, and are having the understanding. And we are going through this process because the goal is the final redemption. 
Now, this is very interesting. Sorry, I'm just like bursting with all the things that I've learned this week. So, Isaac, what, what's happening, it happens during Moses, it happens during the Holocaust. We are going through a, another one. And the thing is, God is, wa wants to be rid of the wicked. And this is happening. And this will happen because some people think, oh, for how long? Will it be forever like that on the earth? And it's like, no. But you see, when there is a purification, it can't happen in one go. It has to be in stages. And now we are going through the final stages because what is like worldwide. Now, I'll give you also an example. I was, we have some hives, beehives, and I was clearing up some wax and making bee wax and being able to be some candles with that. And there is a purification process that's happening and it can't happen in one go. The process has to be repeated. And suddenly it really gave me an insight. It happens with Moses. It happens during the Holocaust. And it's happening now because there is a purification. God is separated the righteous with the wicked. And the wicked, what do we do with all the rubbish? We throw it away. And the righteous will be living on earth during the millennium. And we are in this process. So we need to know that God is good all the time. And we'll speak again about Chesed later on. But I wanted to, because it's like so relevant with the story that you are giving us yeah the the the, so, the uh, mark of the slaves or the uh, digital identity now is so important for you to know that this um, health passport i suppose is a nice way of putting it or jab passport or whatever you want to call it um, isn't about isn't about your health it isn't has nothing whatsoever you may think it does but it doesn't it's the one world government who wants you to have a digital identity. Now, the digital and being, identity and being slave to the system. Mm -hmm. The digital identity is your unique identity in the digital realm. Uh, what's the digital realm? That's on computers or the files. It's all your intimate data, all the information about you, the website, including not just your uh, data, but your websites that you you go on if you use a computer, your online purchases, if you do online shopping, your health records, uh, those are all on computer. Uh, if you go to your GP, you'll see they're using a computer and all your information is on computer. If you go to hospital, all your information is on computer. So all that information is your data footprints, your data's fingerprint, your data identity, your health records, financial accounts, those are all on computer. Uh, your friends on social media, guess what? That's all on computer. So the digital identities can be used to determine what products and services and um, information are available to us. And uh, they can give governments and corporations power uh, to incentivize, coerce or otherwise manipulate human behavior under a system of social credit so there's a yeah. system being introduced mm -hmm. of social credit what what's the social credit that's basically how much money the government will allow you and like the amazing thing is so if you are close to your phone and you are speaking with certain friends and you are speaking about certain things that you will wish uh, there is a joke about that if people want some christmas uh, present they should just speak to their friends or like, oh, I wish this and that, and suddenly everything would be on, on, on there. Um, like you had an advert for certain things and all of that. And, and we were speaking about certain things, and I had it on my phone. So we know that it's true. It's like they're recording everything. Now, the, the question is, what's really happening? Well, why are they introducing these things, uh, these jab passports worldwide? The answer is that the unelected architects of the Great Reset Agenda... Uh, and you might not know about the Reset Agenda, then there's a lot of information online, are spiriting towards a global system of social credit through the all-encompassing biometric digital identity schemes. In the new report, the unelected globalists at the World Economic Forum, the WEF, say that the jab passports are a form of digital identity with expansion plans 
to include your credit history and online behavior. The World Economic Forum report, Advancing Digital Agency, the power of data intermediaries confirms that what the people, what uh, the independent media has been warning us about since 2020, that jab passports are just a form of digital identity which determine your level of access to goods and services. And uh, this is this is what we're going to be seeing now. They not only store uh, all your online behavior, but all your intimate uh, medical information is also on there. Um, we've already seen the effect that, the discriminatory effect that the jab passport in Israel, we've seen that, that restaurants weren't accessible. In fact, are not, in fact, a lot of society closed down, that you couldn't go pretty much anywhere. The cinema was subject to this passport. Now, the interesting thing is this has not stopped uh, the spread of the virus or any virus uh, as the reason is you say, well, why hasn't it done that? Because the jab itself uh, doesn't s uh, prevent transmission and people are even getting sick, Natalie, after multiple doses of the jab. Even the uh, World Health Organization says the jab passports may increase, the risk may increase, listen to this, this is what they say, may increase the risk of the spread of disease. So, uh, then why is it, uh, then why are they so keen for us to have this uh, passport? This is because of the social credit system, the digital identity scheme, and the restrictions are all to do with that. It's going to have your credit history, your medical history, your online behaviour. Uh, a bank can decide whether you are subject to a loan or not. It's going to have a credit scoring on it. Uh, it's going to take into account uh, all of your activities. And uh, it's going to have a score on it. Unbelievable that they assign a score to you. And you might say, well, is this... Back is, to school. Yeah, this is like... Uh, what's happening in China? Yes, you're right. Profile is including your data and biometrics, history, uh, credit or medical history, online purchasing, judgments, anything that uh, is online about you will suddenly pop up on the digital identity. So this is very serious. This is um, part of the one world government strategy, as Natalie has told you. Uh, things haven't changed very much no. since... Uh, the book of um, Exodus and the uh, slavery, the slaves having to have a mark, having to have uh, a record about them. And then, of course, as Natalie was saying, in the Holocaust, the um, mark was put on by the Nazis onto the Jewish people. They had a mark onto their arms. Now, we're at this moment uh, in, uh, in the year. It's, it's coming up to Thanksgiving, Natalie, mm -hmm. as we've come into the studio. And guess what? In Israel, uh, there's been the first blue, uh, first bird flu case of, of the season in, guess what, Turkey's uh, Thanksgiving. For those of you who don't know, uh, uh, obviously for our American friends, they are very familiar with this, with the Turkey and, and Thanksgiving. But for our friends in the UK and across the world who don't know about this. I know, but you need to know something also, like for in Hebrew, Hodu, it means Turkey, is also saying thank you. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so it's like amazing, like the, the, the Hebrew language is very much like Thanksgiving, Hodu, and Hodu is a Turkey. So the, we're coming up to the, um, uh, thanks, we're at, it's Thanksgiving as we've come into the studio and the uh, we have bird flu in turkeys in Israel. Uh, the slaughterhouse where the infections were allegedly found and all the coops within a 10 kilometer radius were placed under quarantine. Turkeys were allegedly found to be infected with the H5N1 strain of avian influenza in Kibbutz Shalahot in northern Israel uh, this week and the first cases detected by the Israeli Agricultural Ministry. The so-called infected birds were discovered at a slaughterhouse in the area. The slaughterhouse and all the farms raising turkeys within a 10 kilometer radius were placed under quarantine. Now, what's very interesting is that many of you may not even know that turkeys are 
raised in Israel? Well, one of the reasons is that we have a lot of American Jews who come to live in Israel. And one of the things is that Thanksgiving is very important for them. So hence the turkey. The agricultural ministry is apparently following the spread of the virus and the health ministry and the nature and parks authority have been informed about the cases. The agricultural ministry stressed that it's still safe to purchase eggs, well that's nice to know, and poultry, and that all eggs and poultry should be cooked well before consumption. The ministry additionally gave the ridiculous instruction to all those raising birds, that's poultry birds, to keep the birds inside buildings and prevent them from going outside. Why, why not prevent them from going outside? Maybe they might get some fresh air to lower the chances of some infection. Last year, an alleged large outbreak of H5N1 latterly, uh, avian influenza spread throughout Israel allegedly. And again, uh, interestingly enough, it was called one of the worst or the largest outbreaks in the world. I don't know if you knew about that. Now, it was also on the wild, on the wild bird thing. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, the thing is, and what's very concerning, is that we're dealing with a global agenda here. The globalist agenda is the planned food shortages, supply chain sabotage. And anything to assist that, anything to help break down the food chain, break down the supply chain, is being sabotaged at the moment. Now, it's very hard to believe that uh, people are doing this intentionally, but this is what's happening. Now, in Israel, we've, we've talked about this before, but I just wanted to remind, remind you, if you don't know, but the pharmacies and grocery stores have reported increased theft of baby food due to its high cost. Uh, and you may be surprised by that in Israel. Food producer also, Sunfrost, has in the last few months um, recall packs of its frozen string beans after a piece of snake, oh dear, was found in a packet. It just happened to be there. It came after a couple of weeks of a half-dead mouse was found in another packet that just happened to get in there by accident. Parent company Tuvasio apologised and issued a recall, promising compensation to people who had already purchased the products. The dead in the animal food scandal in Israel came after discovery it gets worse, folks. After the discovery of multiple salmonella samples led Strauss to recall thousands upon thousands of chocolate bars, cereal bars, cakes and puddings from their shelves throughout Israel. Now, one of the immediate effects of this, which I personally have witnessed, is that chocolate bars suddenly disappeared. No more chocolate. There was, uh, no. there was chocolate, but not Strauss. And, and some sweets too. Right. And also other things that they produce. They're actually a major food producer in Israel. And suddenly all the things are disappearing. Now, the food supply problems is part of the end time scenario. It's part of the Great Reset. It's part of the globalists' agenda. They want to do this because uh, they're trying to... De uh, destabilize the existing order. Now, again, this is very interesting what you are saying because you know a lot of psalms are also with prophetic words, and it's written there. I was reading this week now, I can't remember which one it was like 33, 34, 35, yeah, something like that. And they were saying in it that God, even during famine, will look after you. So, again, you know, we don't have to be afraid okay we need to be wise we need to have a bit of storage of good food um but like god is going to provide for his people he always has done it is again is like we is nothing is new under the sun we need to know that nothing is new under the sun and his redemption is coming and he said himself the creator I will look after you even during famine and he will do it so we have really not to be afraid we have to exercise ourselves to trust in him all the time and again I was looking at this week you know the name Chesed is his loving kindness maybe is it okay if I do it now and I was reading this is also in the psalm psalm 33 and it's verse 5, he says, He loves charity and justice. The kindness of, of Adonai fills the earth. Okay, 
And so when you say written kindness here, is chesed, is loving kindness. It means that sometimes we don't deserve for him to be kind with us, but he's like, he will always do extra for us. And after he said, be imitators of me. So we need to be the same. We need to have chesed. We need to, like for the Jewish people, is one other thing to do act of chesed, act of loving kindness. Once a day, it's like he's changing the world. And, and it's like, I remember it's a long time ago, they were speaking about, you know, do a, a good deed once a day. And, and yes, it is. It's part of how God is with us. He's always like that. Chesed. Now, this is also interesting because, you know, in the New Testament, when Paul, the apostle, is speaking and he's always doing greetings at the beginning of his letters, he's, he's always written, the translation is like that the grace and the love of God will be given to you. Now, if you look in Hebrew, it's like chesed v'shalom yiten, yiten uh, lachem. Okay, so may the loving kindness of God and his shalom. So again, shalom is not just peace. It's like being whole, mm -hmm. having everything put in order in your life. So his loving kindness and his is is like is like shalom will be with you so this is what paul was saying all the time we have to remember all the disciples and and shaul saul paul was a, a jewish person by the way he was a rabbi he knew a lot of things he knew um like the the ancient writing he knew some uh, commentaries of the Torah, of the Tenach. And so when he was saying that, he was saying, okay, like, like it's written in the Psalm 33, the kindness of God, the chesed of God, fill the earth, is all there, all around. And again, it's us who have to see it. And sometimes he's like, thank you, Lord, for this water. Thank you, Lord, for the, the air that I'm breathing. You know, it's like, it's, his, it's like his breath. We, we are living because of the breath of God, because he's giving, his, he's giving us air. So when we fill ourselves with all these good things, it makes the fears going away because we know that his loving kindness endures forever, that the loving kindness of God is filling all the earth, male, it means it's filling it up, it's there, full, totally, not just a tiny bit here and a tiny bit there. No, it's there all the time. And we have to feed on that. Well, it's, um, it's amazing, though, the, the, the time that we're living in, Natalie, with the uh, <clears throat> things that are happening, you can be overwhelmed by them. But as Natalie was saying, uh, you know, the loving kindness of God is going to be with us as we go through these times and uh, keeping us above the our heads above water and uh, and he's, he's going to look after us mm -hmm. as we as we go through these things now there are things there are issues that are arising you know with health and mental health um, and in particularly in Israel we had a, a very difficult lockdown I don't know throughout the world how your lockdowns were and um, there are even rumours that we're going to have lockdowns again. Now, in the Jerusalem Post has recently reported that thousands of Israeli youths continue to struggle with mental health. Mental health is something which has really been affected during the, um, during the lockdowns and during the restrictions and um, uh, people who already were suffering have had is uh, made it worse in a way that because suddenly we're, everybody's stuck. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see in Israel, Israel being the Israel first, it's very important for the rest of the world that this is an issue here. Um, there have been uh, significant, the Jerusalem Post said there's a significant rise in mental health diagnosis. Uh, and the use of psychiatric medicine among Israeli teenagers, which is very concerning that it's the young people that are being affected uh, since these um, nonsensical, entirely unnecessary government restrictions, according to a 2020 study by Maccabi Health and the K 
I institute Israel's emotional first aid service, I didn't know it had one, called Iran, E-R-A, and said that in the past 12 months, 12,000 Israeli children and teens have reached out to the association through its internet support chat, while a further 6,000 called its emotional support hotline. Some 18,000 Israeli youths reported feelings of distress through Iran's hotline and internet support services. In 2021, the association revealed, Iran said in the past 12 months, 12,000 Israeli children and teens reached out to the association through its internet support chat, while a further 6,000 called its emotional support host, um, hotline. Concern now, this is uh, very concerning. In some 5% of the calls made to Iran were of a suicidal nature, it said. The absurd COVID restrictions, the lockdowns, caused a global mental health crisis amongst children and adolescents. According to the University of Calgary's meta-analysis polling of the results of 29 studies from around the world, 80,879 uh, youths were involved in the study. The study found that depression and anxiety symptoms have doubled in children and adolescents worldwide. Meanwhile, in Israel, a leading clinical health psychologist, Professor Golan Shahar Ben-Gurion University, gave an overview of the situation and advice for parents. My message is beware, he said, there is a mental health pandemic. Lockdown, and this is what the professor said. Lockdowns and the temporary switch from face-to-face -face contact to the use of Zoom and other electronic means have had an impact on socialization. In other words, young people uh, meeting other young people. It's had an absolutely uh, uh, lasting effect. The absence of social interaction at a certain point in time can leave children and teens even long afterwards with depression, eating disorders and even suicidal thoughts. It had a very lasting effect. And then he says, Professor Garner added, don't assume that just because the child appears not to exhibit symptoms of distress that, uh, that they are not... Um, been, they are not feeling distressed. You may well uh, have to push to get them to answer, uh, but, th but those parents who do question their children are, from compassionate reasons will uh, be helping them because there are things that they need to express. And I think that goes for all of us, Natalie, that yes. everybody who's been through these um, restrictions and lockdowns has been affected, but particularly the young the young people, and maybe you know young people who've been affected. And because um, we are human being, and human beings need face to face conversation, face to face recognition, because you need to be recognized all the time for who you are. If not, you are losing your self esteem. This is very important. And um, and you know God put us together, and. Uh, you know, it's the, the lockdowns and restrictions, um, which didn't do any, which didn't help anybody, mm -hmm. have caused this global, this global pandemic, health pandemic. Mm -hmm. And you see Panim, Panim El Panim, this is like a face to face. This is important to have a face to face every day with God and speak with him and face to face with people, with friends, for with whoever, because we are human being is very important sure so um if you've been affected or you know people have been affected then please do contact us um we'd be interested to know it's it's, it's very very important we talk about physical health and 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 um well-being and that's very very important but of course also mental health is extremely important as and, well and spiritual health and spiritual health we need to be uh, as Natalie was saying, we need to be uh, the, with the grace of an, and and the shalom, that which and shalom means the peace, not just peace, but it means well-being. It means everything is in order. Yeah. It means everything is okay, and uh, that's another thing that's very important for us to know. You know, in the middle of everything, we need to know that everything is okay. That God is on your case. That God is interested. I'm not just interested, but he's look, but he's looking after you in the middle of everything. Um, that is taking care of you. Well, it's been great to be with you. We uh, appreciate your company today. And uh, it's, it's uh, always a joy for Natalie and I uh, to come into your homes and, and tell you what's happening 
not just in Israel, but around the world and how it's affecting us in these end times, how the pieces of the puzzle, as I said, last time we were with you are coming together. Um, we do a new story every every day as, as far as possible, uh, which is available on our you are. Uh, uh, website, which is at uh, on the media page. You can um, scroll down and then you see Israel News. There's a there's a story. And there's also, you can go on to Gab or Parley, and we have an account there, and you can subscribe and get the, the news as well. You can also subscribe, they, Natalie um, does a, a um, weekly update, and you can get that. Also, you can subscribe to that on the uh, website. If you'd like to support us, and we need your support, your financial support, then please, uh, then do... Please help us. Uh, we very much appreciate that. We appreciate everybody who's standing with us financially. There's a donate page on the website and you can go to that. And uh, also you can contact us if uh, you'd like any information how to support us. Um, and, um, you know, the, the website has so much information, doesn't it? Actually, there's a lot of information on the website you can get uh, about the program and you can also see... Uh, previous programs, you can catch up uh, with what we've been doing. On well, Rumble. So and we're Rumble. on Rumble, yes. And you can subscribe. To you can subscribe to our Rumble channel, and that again is you. There's a link on the uh, on the website, um, and uh, it. You know, there's a a lot of ways you could help us as well. We appreciate the prayer support and intercession. That's a very important part of of our work as well. We, we appreciate those who are standing with us in that aspect. And uh, it's as I say, it's been great to be with you. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, we're the programme that looks at the land, the people and the language.